So, das ist aber gar nicht das, was ich angucken wollte. Und zwar hat der Gründer, Mitbegründer von Twitch, Justin okay. Kahn, klingt jetzt auch wie ein Mortal Kombat Charakter, aber ist der Mitbegründer von Twitch, ein Video gemacht, das acht Minuten geht, wo er beschreibt, wie sie fast an Twitch, an Google für eine Milliarde Dollar verkauft hätten. Stein. No fucking way, Alter. Und wir gehen mal rein. Sehr interessant für mich. Morning of August 25th, 2014. Well, I remember where I was. I woke up in a pool of water at Burning Man, desperately trying to figure out if we sold Twitch for a billion dollars. But let's rewind a little bit to a few months earlier, where we were trying to sell Twitch to Google, which was a deal that would have changed the course of internet streaming history. Alter Schwede. Es war ja damals schon die Spekulation, dass Google und oder Amazon da dran sind. How's it going? I'm Justin. Justin Kahn from Justin.tv. Hey guys, it's me, Justin Kahn. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Remember to bang that subscribe button for behind the scenes stories of entrepreneurship, life advice and many more videos coming soon. Okay, let me take you back. Das ist der Rilo OG. Das ist der Typ hinter Justin TV. Justin Kahn ist der, ist der Mitbegründer von Justin TV. Das ist der Dude, der gesagt hat, wir machen eine Plattform auf und filmen unser Leben. Ist dann mit einem Backpack und einer Mütze mit einer Kamera dran durch die Gegend gelaufen und hat alles gefilmt, was er filmen konnte. Also wirklich, das ist der Dude, der Justin von Justin TV. Absolut irre. To the beginning of 2014. By this time, it had been seven years since Emmett, the current CEO and my co-founder at Twitch, and I had started the company. We started off as Justin TV, and three years earlier, we'd pivoted to Twitch. There were a ton of skeptics. People heard watching other people play video games, and they were like, why would anyone do that? But we weren't worried. Twitch was far and away the most popular esports streaming service. We had over 55 million monthly viewers. And at one point, Wall Street Journal said that we were the fourth highest traffic site in North America. Crazy, fucking crazy. At this point, Twitch had over 100 employees and we'd raised over $45 million from Thrive Capital, Bessemer, and many other investors. Our last valuation was over $120 million. And back then, Twitch had just entered the big boys club, which meant that we had ongoing conversations with how we could work with every other big Silicon Valley company. Wie geil es eigentlich gewesen wäre, wenn Twitch nicht verkauft hätte und nur synergiert. Das heißt, es, es wären nicht Twitch per se, die verkauft hätten, sondern sie hätten sich nur auf Synergien mit allen anderen eingelassen. Boah, boah, das wäre verrückt gewesen. We just signed a deal with Microsoft to put Twitch streams on the Xbox. And I thought it was going to be huge. Now there's an old saying in Silicon Valley, companies are bought, not sold. Mm -hmm. It had been seven years and earlier in the year, Emmett and I wanted to sell some shares so we could get some liquidity, but no one was buying. The best time to sell your startup is when you don't need to or don't want to. You want someone to come to the table and make you an offer. Now, enter Google. Google's corporate development team, which is the fancy name for the people in Silicon Valley who run around trying to buy companies, came to us and they said they were interested in buying Twitch. Oh my God. Stell dir mal vor. Du kannst dir das nicht vorstellen. We had already been talking to YouTube about a business development deal. If a YouTuber went live on Twitch, it would pop up a little thing that said, watch this YouTuber stream on Twitch mm. on all of their videos. Ziemlich cool, tatsächlich. We thought that was pretty cool. Hey, free traffic. Das ist tatsächlich eine mega coole Idee. Schade, dass sich das nie durchgesetzt hat. While we were working on the deal, YouTube came to us and said, hey, we should just buy you guys. Now oh, das wäre krass gewesen. Wenn YouTube Twitch gekauft hätte, würde YouTube Gaming, so wie es heute existiert, gar nicht da sein. Sondern es wäre einfach Twitch parallel gewesen und über die Jahre hinweg hätte Twitch sich, wäre Twitch langsam migriert. So langsam wäre es migriert gewesen. So jedes Bruchstücke wären rüber gewesen, du hättest automatisch VODs auf YouTube gehabt. Oh mein Gott, ich überlege, wir kennen es natürlich nur aus einer Vorstellung, was passiert wäre, wenn YouTube Twitch gekauft hätte oder Google Twitch gekauft hätte. Das ist so spekulativ, aber das hätte, das hätte alles verändert, alles. Es würde kein Twitch Prime geben, das definitiv nicht. Es wäre, boah, es wäre verrückt gewesen. Now, YouTube was already the number one platform for uploaded video, and this would pretty much cement them as the king of streaming. Yeah. So what was the offer? They said they would give us $150 million in consideration and $25 million in retention. Consideration is the part of the deal that goes to the cap table. That means everybody who is an owner of the company. 
The retention is the part of the deal that goes to the team that is continuing on. That means all of the management team, the employees, and basically everyone who's gonna work on Twitch at YouTube. This would mean after seven years of hard work, we would sell the company for almost $200 million. That was worth considering, but we thought the company was worth more. We just raised around at $120 million valuation, and that wasn't really that big of a step up. We thought we could do better. So Emmett, my co-founder, told him no, and it was a hard decision at the time. Emmett had, Emmett had gesagt, nö, wir verkaufen nicht. Surprisingly, they came back to us and they said, hey, how about 225 and 50 million dollars in retention? And we were like, still no. And then they said, how about 375 million dollars in retention? Oh mein Gott. Also, tut mir leid. Wenn du zweimal ein Angebot ausschlägst Sorry. und die kommen das dritte... Moin. Die kommen das dritte Mal wieder zurück, dann schlägst du so lange aus, wie du ausschlagen kannst. Dann gehst du so weit, wie du weit gehen kannst, so. Wenn der das dritte Mal wieder, wenn er zweimal zurückkommt und nachdem der Nein gesagt und er, er setzt da immer so ein Drittel mit drauf, so, oder ein Viertel oder was auch immer, dann sagst du immer wieder Nein. Mal gucken, was geht, so. And at that point I was like, Emmett, yo, maybe we should take this. And Emmett went back to them and said, no, you guys are more than half off. Uh, it's too low. And stop with these 24-hour exploding deals. That means we'd have to sign it within 24 hours of receiving it. We're not going to decide that fast. Holy shit, Alter. Was für ein Poker. So they kept coming back and it went higher and higher. Then it was like 500 and 100. And then it was like 625 plus 125. And at that point, Emmett told them, well, I'd like to get the number up to a billion. And that's when they came back with their final offer. $850 million in consideration and $150 million in retention. Oh my God, Bruder. Darum können die entscheiden. Niemand, niemand, der Geld wirklich braucht, sollte jemals so eine Entscheidung treffen. Je jemand, der Geld wirklich braucht, hätte beim ersten Mal Ja gesagt. Aber das Angebot hat sich verfühlt, gefühlt verachtfacht. I remember when Emmett called me. Was heißt Retention? Also Retention heißt, es geht in die Investition an die Mitarbeiter, an die Staff sozusagen. And told me the deal. I literally fell to my knees laughing. And this is the reason why when you're selling your company, you should always, always, always look for a strategic acquirer. A strategic acquirer is going to be willing to pay you a lot more than someone who just looks at how much money you're making. Potential acquirers value companies based on their financial value or their strategic value, or a combo of both. Do not underestimate finding a strategic acquirer. When I heard about the deal, I was ecstatic. We had been working on the company for the last eight years, and it had been a really, really grueling, grinding long road. Finally, we were gonna be somebody in Silicon Valley. This was the way we were gonna make our bones. We got together as a board and approved the deal as quickly as possible. Emmett signed the term sheet and sent it back. But wait, that was just the term sheet. There's a lot more to do to close a deal. The company's got to dig up basically every skeleton in the closet, every contract, every employee, every document, and basically hand it over to the acquirers. Ah, okay, die haben also echt, sie haben wirklich vorgehabt zu unterschreiben, Alter. Sie hätten das durchgezogen. What the fuck? And then after you go through the diligence process, you still have to write all of the merger docs. This is a massive, massive document that explains exactly how the companies are going to. Oh my God, eh. Be combined. And of course, Wenn fucking Google mehrfach bei dir anfragt, dein Unternehmen zu kaufen, dann müssen die Twitch damals für verdammt lukrativ gehalten haben. Ich glaube, die haben Twitch nicht für lukrativ gehalten, sondern sie haben Twitch für das gesehen, was es ist. Ein unheimlicher Synergiestrang. Genau, was Amazon auch macht. Twitch ist ja nicht etwas, was Geld verdient. YouTube verdient ja auch kein Geld. Das ist einfach nur Synergie. Das heißt, was macht, was macht Amazon denn auch mit, mit Twitch? Sie lenken alles, was sie können, auf Amazon Prime. Sie steuern förmlich alles über Amazon Prime. Twitch ist eigentlich nur, Bruder, wie viel können wir in unsere Amazon Prime Sachen reinstecken? Ihr werdet nie Gewinn machen und we don't give a fuck. Aber ihr macht bitte so viel Primes, wie ihr könnt. Und wir, wir ballern das raus und, und so viel es geht. Every point that you didn't put into the <lacht> is going to end up being negotiated by armies of lawyers in this massive document. And lastly, after you close the deal, you still have to wait for the government to approve to make sure that it's not a monopoly. Yeah. This part can really f*** you. Because after you close the deal, you give control of your company to the acquirer, but you haven't got paid yet until the government approves. When there's an antitrust concern, the government approval can take a long time. At the time, we had just heard a rumor that Waze had tried to sell themselves to Google and it had taken over a year for them to get approved. Ooh, okay. We were worried the same was going to happen to Twitch. After all, we were pretty much the biggest streaming site out there. We had operating costs, streamers, and employees to pay. 
So we had to negotiate what was gonna happen after we signed, but before the deal closed. Since we wouldn't be able to raise any more money, we said, hey, YouTube needs to give us $50 million immediately as we sign this deal in order for us to continue operating. And then if the deal doesn't close, the government vetoes it for any reason, you pay us 200 million. We wanted Google to take that risk because they were claiming that there was no risk that this failed antitrust, which we thought was questionable. Ach du Scheiße, Bruder. Stell mal vor, du gehst zu Google und sagst, ihr gebt mir jetzt 50 Millionen und dann gebt ihr mir 200 Millionen, egal was passiert. Und wenn das nicht funktioniert, ne? I don't give a fuck. <lacht> Holy shit. And they refused to agree to fund the company in the interim. After months of diligence and getting all the documents ready, finally, we just decided to walk away. It was devastating. It felt like we were snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. We we're finally gonna get that recognition that we desperately needed in Silicon Valley, but it wasn't gonna happen just yet. It was heartbreaking. Okay, jetzt macht er kurz noch die Business äh, Sache draus. Okay, alles klar, I don't give a fuck. Ich bin nur für die Stories da. Halbe Shark Tank. What it's like to sell a company. Oh mein Gott, Bruder. Also, lass uns erstmal ganz kurz, was wäre, wenn das Google gekauft hätte? So viele Varianten. Eine davon wäre, sie hätten es eingestampft, sie hätten sich die Technologie geholt. Wann wird das nur aufhören? Die glaubt nie Lul. Sie hätten sich die Technologie geholt und hätten das in YouTube integriert. Sie hätten das langsam migriert, hätten den Twitch Aspekt gelassen, aber es langsam migriert und aus der Synergie mit der Streaming-Plattform und der VOD-Plattform etwas Unglaubliches gemacht. Puh. Uff, das wäre, also es wäre unglaublich gewesen, glaube ich. Es ist unvorstellbar. Ich würde gerne eine, eine alternative Realität erleben, wo das, also, oder sehen, wo das passiert wäre. Das hätte, also ich glaube, es hätte auch ordentlich nach hinten losgehen können, Mann. The Seller Company. It can seem super glamorous with exponentially big numbers and amazing headlines. But it's also an emotional roller coaster. Let me walk you through what happened after we walked away from a deal with Google and how we got to selling our company to Amazon. How's it going? I'm Justin, Justin Khan from Justin.tv. Bruder, I miss old Twitch, Alter. Fuck me. Hey guys, it's me, Justin Khan, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Subscribe for ich weiß nicht, ob ich das alte Twitch vermisse oder meine Herangehensweise oder meine Sicht an Twitch. Ich glaube, es ist weniger das alte Twitch. Ich glaube, altes Twitch war genauso abgefuckt. Aber vielleicht war meine naive Perspektive auf Twitch noch so viel, so viel besser. For more story times, advice, behind the scenes content and more videos coming soon. Now, where do we leave off? After months and months of hard work, negotiation and diligence, We had signed a deal. In Wirklichkeit vermisst du Simon. Ja, der Umgang damit war auch krass am Anfang. Aber jetzt ist halt alles professioneller, ja. I don't know. Deal with Google and then walked away from a billion dollars. So what were we supposed to do now? To take you behind the scenes. Was hat dich eigentlich dazu animiert, hier zu arbeiten? Überhaupt nichts. Ich habe das erste Mal gemerkt, dass man Geld bezahlen kann, als ich meine, als ich meine Miete davon bezahlen konnte. Also ich habe überhaupt keinen Anspruch gehabt, hier zu arbeiten. Ich habe einfach meine Miete davon bezahlt und dachte, hä? Ich kann davon meine Miete bezahlen. Professioneller, ich finde eher, die Streamer werden, immer, werden unprofessioneller und verlieren mehr die Manieren, aber sowas ist subjektiv. Ja, ich muss dir leider subjektiv sagen, dass du keine Ahnung hast, wovon du sprichst. Wenn du wirklich wüsstest, was Twitch damals war, würdest du sowas nicht sagen. Denn auf Twitch die N-Bombe zu droppen, war mal nicht einen Bann. Auf Twitch ähm, homophobe Slurs zu machen, war mal nicht einen Bann. Äh, Harassment war in irgendeiner F war nur schwierig, wenn du es anderen Partnern gemacht hast. Ansonsten konntest du harassen, wen du wolltest. Du konntest den, du konntest die, F du konntest Leute nennen. No one gives a fuck. Niemand hat das gekümmert. Niemand, absolut niemand. Die einzige einzige Instanz, die kontrolliert hat, war: Bitte beleidige nicht andere Partner oder bitte greife nicht andere Partner an. Du, ansonsten hast du alles, konntest du alles machen. Die no Bitte, um deine Miete zu bezahlen. Das war irre. ja. Und das hat nichts mit ähm, professioneller. So Professionell ist jetzt einfach dafür gebannt zu werden, wenn du so eine Scheiße machst. So. Also es ist deutlich besser geworden. Deutlich. Deutlich besser geworden. Es, das Maß an wilder Westen war wirklich uiuiui. Uiuiuiui. Ui, ui, ui. Super crazy. When you sell your company, there are four major stakeholders. The first is the founders and operators. So that was Emmett, the CEO, my co-founder, and myself and the other founders and management team of the company. 
Emmett and I were on the board of Twitch and most of the time in an acquisition, the board is gonna do whatever the founder and CEO wants to do. Two, you have the rest of the board. And this is mostly investors who have backed you that have board seats. Three, we have investment bankers we've hired, in this case, Catalyst, to help us navigate and negotiate the deal with prospective mm. buyers. These guys are expert negotiators. Where we spend all our time building product, these guys spend all their time negotiating deals. After the Google deal fell through, which we tried to negotiate ourselves, we decided to hire Catalyst and they leapt into action to drum up more interest from another buyer. Four, you have the corporate development firm of the acquirer. So these are the professional negotiators on the other side that are trying to figure out, do they want to buy your company and how much are they going to pay? So in Silicon Valley, when one big... 800, 800 million have they paid, I think, or? How much have they paid? 900 million? I don't know. The company is talking to another smaller but still big-ish company about acquiring it or gets around fast. And when one big company wants a deal, sometimes every other big company wants that deal too. Sometimes just to prevent the other company from having it. Yeah. For example, after the deal with Google went sideways, Zuck actually called Emmett up and said, hey, I want to invest $50 million and you guys should keep going. But the next big dog company to come knock... Fa dass Facebook kommt, während Google anklopft, ist natürlich schon sehr faszinierend. ...king at our doors for an acquisition was Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo! Yahoo had been talking to us for a while, and after our bankers let them know that the company was still in play, they came back to us really quickly with a big number. $1.25 billion plus plus $250 million in retention. What the fuck? That was 50% more than what Google had just offered. Our minds were fucking blown. <laughs> Yahoo? Wo hat Yahoo denn 1,25 Milliarden noch her? And we immediately said, yes, please, and thank you. At the time, because we have done all this painstaking diligence for the Google deal, we said, hey, let's just use the same documents and the same diligence, and let's agree to a quick two-week close. And Yahoo, for some reason, agreed. Then, the night before the deal was supposed to close, Emmett and the rest of the management team went over to Marissa Meyer's house. She was Yahoo CEO, and she wanted to do a final meeting. And Marissa had a vision for Twitch that I think encompassed Twitch expanding beyond gaming to everything from fashion shows to music. And unfortunately, there was a bit of a disconnect there. Emmett and the rest of the team felt like things were working with gaming and we should continue going with the direction we had. Oh my God, Alter, was? Yahoo wollte Twitch zu einem Fernsehsender machen? The fuck? The next day, Yahoo told us they changed their mind. And just like that, $1.5 billion dollars gone. We had literally gone from zero to $1 billion dollars to zero to $1.5 billion dollars to zero. Now, what the fuck? By this time, we were so exhausted and burned out. It had been almost six months of doing deals and we were looking for anything. And somehow, Catalyst reactivated yet another buyer, Amazon. Oh my God, what the fuck? We started talking to their corporate development team and Emmett even met Jeff Bezos once. And then we... <laughs> <laughs> Wie ist es, Jeff Bezos zu treffen? We started talking to their corporate development team and Emmett even met Jeff Bezos once. And then... <laughs> we agreed to do a deal. It was $1.2 billion with $200 million dollars in retention. So how do these decisions get made? Well, after each offer... The board is obligated to discuss it. So we would get on a call, Emmett, myself, and the other board members, and talk about whether we thought it was a fair offer or whether we should keep going. And because the board is reliant on the management team, aka Emmett and the rest of the executives to run the company, we mostly wanted to do what he wanted to do. So the entire Twitch board is on a conference call. And we're discussing some of the minor details of the deal when one of our investors, Chris Pike, said, uh, I don't think we should do this deal. Hold up. Wait a minute, something ain't right. This deal was going to make everyone around the table stupid rich. No one knows what to say, and there's dead silence. 30 seconds go by, one of our investors finally breaks in with, why not? And Chris says, well, I think the company's gonna be worth more. And the other investor says, how, how much more? And Chris says, well, I think it could be worth three, four billion. I don't know, I just think it's gonna be worth more. What the fuck? And maybe we should keep going. There's another long silence. And then literally, we just kept going like Chris never said anything. Everyone else just wanted to get this deal done. So we decided as a board, we're going to sell to Amazon. Third time's the charm. We're ready to sign this deal. Well, 
not so fast. Amazon Corp Dev calls us and said, well, they had a little bit of a change of heart and now the deal's priced at $970 million. Take it or leave it. And you know what? We took it. it. Wasn't quite the billion dollars that we wanted, but well, it was close enough. We were so fatigued from this whole process. We just wanted it to be over. And hey, that's still a life-changing amount of money. We've signed the deal. Amazon signed the deal. All our signatures are under lock and key by a bunch of lawyers. And the deal's set to close on Monday, August 25th, 2014. Oh, I remember. One small wrinkle, I was gonna be at Burning Man at the time and there's no cell phone signal or Wi-Fi at Burning Man. If you haven't been to Burning Man, it's an experiment. Bruder, 2014, Bruder, da war ich... Na, 25. August 2014 war ich ein halbes, dreiviertel Jahr schon Partner. Small community that happens out in the desert for roughly a week around Labor Day every year. And it's one of my favorite times. One of the cool things about Burning Man is that people build art. And one piece of art that they build is called an art car, where they take a vehicle and they radically modify it so it doesn't even look like a vehicle. These art cars can be anything. Ships, there's a giant sheep, I've seen a giant scorpion. There's cars with tens of thousands of watts of speakers. There's cars with LEDs, there's literally everything. So I'd spent the entire summer building my own art car called Titanic's End. Titanic's End, which Emmett named, was a giant iceberg with 10,000 LEDs on the outside, built around a freezer truck. And if you crawled in that freezer truck, it would actually be cold, which was pretty cool when it was 90 degrees outside in the desert. So I told Emmett, hey, I'm going to be off the grid in Burning Man this day that we're supposed to close the deal. Do you need anything from me? And he was like, no, you're good to go. And so since I've been working around the clock to make this art car happen by the end of August, I said, I'm going to go. And we drove the car eight hours from the Bay Area all the way through Reno to the Black Rock Desert in uh, northern Nevada. I set up my insulation foam hut that I was staying in. It was pretty janky, but you know, radical self-reliance. I'm so exhausted that Sunday night from everything we did on the deal and finally getting this art car to Burning Man. I just pass out in my hut. And overnight, I kind of hear these like pitter-patter, pitter-patter sounds. I'm like, oh, what's happening? I don't know. And I just sleep through it. And in the morning, I literally wake up in an inch of water. It had rained all night the night before. Everything I had in my ear was soaked. And that's how I woke up on the day that we sold our company. There's not really cell phone or Wi-Fi service at Burning Man. So I was trying to figure out, did the thing that was supposed to happen today happen? So after drying out all my shit, I literally walked around Burning Man for five hours trying to find a camp with Wi-Fi or anyone that had an internet connection. And I basically had no luck until I walked back to my camp and saw my friend using her phone. And I was like, hey, can I borrow that for a second? And she had like one edge wireless or whatever, you know, it was like really terrible. But I was able to send a single text message to a friend Hey, it's Justin. Did anything happen today? And after a harrowing dot, 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 all of a sudden he wrote, congrats. And that's how I knew we Krass, Alter. sold our company. Okay, so we closed with Amazon and now there's just... Bruder, stell mal vor, du kriegst eine Nachricht, die dir darüber informiert, dass du mir nie wieder Geld, äh, Sorgen um Geld machen musst. Ja. So stellen sich Affiliates übrigens vor, wenn sie Twitch-Partner werden, aber... One final hurdle. The US Department of Justice. So when the deal got announced, we actually didn't have any money yet. Everybody thinks you're rich, but you're not. The US Department of Justice has to approve the deal to make sure there's no antitrust oh, issue. And once you. they do that, then you can Hat get it. Kalt For Flamme about a month, we just Steine made reagiert. dot, 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 dot. Then it was the end of September, and our other co-founder, Kyle, was getting married in a castle in Italy. So we all went. Kyle happened to find the castle in Italy that was both the coldest, but also had the worst cell phone signal. The day of the wedding, we're supposed to get, be getting paid, and I'm on my cell phone refreshing my banking mobile app and then boom it hits and i see more money than i thought bank of america could even hold i, I remember thinking hmm, i should probably turn on two-factor authentication on my bank account now. <laughs> everybody celebrated that night holy shit we done it we'd sold our company so then on the trip i decided hey i want to make my first big purchase and i ended up going to a prada outlet This was like the Costco of Prada, a Prada superstore with pretty much everything on sale. So we walked out of there with a lot, but I mean, there was definitely people out there who were buying more than me. It was pretty funny. It was like every Asian person in China was there at that outlet in the countryside of Italy. So what happens next? 
Well, it turns out that once your basic needs are met, having more and more and more doesn't really do anything for your long-term happiness. I ended up going back to San Francisco, I bought a house, and I went to work at Y Combinator as a partner. Because I was on the board at the time and Emmett was running the company, I didn't have to continue on at Amazon, so I was free to do whatever I wanted. And it felt good to have that recognition of our last eight years of hard work finally paying off. At the time, people were mind boggled why Amazon would pay almost a billion dollars for a company that allowed people to watch streamers play video games. Cuss. But today, in retrospect, it looks pretty oh, good. Sorry, Twitch has been valued at over 15 or $20 billion. So it looks like Amazon got a pretty good deal. Now the part you've all been waiting for, three key lessons for you. You can't get too wrapped up in selling your company. For us, the deal fell through three times. You can't mm -hmm. control that outcome, so try not to get attached to a certain result. This applies to deals and it also applies to life. I try to actively remind myself that being too attached to outcomes is only going to cause my future suffering if it doesn't happen. The sooner you accept that you can't control outcomes in the outside world, the freer you will be. Lesson two, equity is a gamble. It could turn into a life-changing payout and it could also turn into nothing. Only make this gamble if you can afford to do it, which usually correlates with being young and having no opportunity cost. This could have gone many different ways. We had tried to sell our company many times before and it didn't pan out. So in one way, we got very, very lucky. Lesson number three, which came a little bit later. The endless hedonic treadmill to accumulate more and more is a trap. And I know a lot of people will say, hey, Justin, it's easy for you to say that now. But to also, warum können solche Leute ihr Unternehmen nicht selber halten und mal ein Konkurrent für die Großen werden? Relativ einfache Beantwortung der Frage. Also sehr einfach sogar, tatsächlich. Erstaunlich ein so einfach, dass ich nicht, dass ich mir nicht vorstellen kann, dass, dass man da nicht selber drauf 50 kommt. Jahre stand. Stell dir vor, du hast ein Unternehmen gemacht, Stein. das mit so viel Zeit so viel wert ist. Und irgendwann kommt jemand zu dir hin und gibt dir so viel Geld, dass du nicht daran denken kannst, jemals irgendwie damit auszurennen. Dann nimmst du die Kohle. Du musst nie wieder arbeiten gehen. Niemals mehr in deinem Leben. Du machst nur noch Dinge, die dir Spaß machen. Also warum die das verkaufen? Ist, weil sie das haben. Du musst nie wieder irgendwas tun. Never ever. Du kannst also, du triffst zwei Entscheidungen. Entweder du holst dir den Deal deines Lebens und du musst nie wieder was tun und hast dann, kannst machen, was du willst. Oder du konkurrierst mit einem der brutalsten, riesigsten Firmen auf diesem Planeten. Du nimmst also die Kohle, weil das der logische Schritt ist. Ne? Sehr einfacher, sehr einfache Wahl. 